All right, so we're going to get started. Everybody, welcome. So we are Connections, a community of women. Uh, we have a strong Facebook presence with a Facebook group, and we also do events quite often, typically in person, but now online with the COVID crisis happening. Um, but we're all about supporting other women and creating community for women and trying to be as inspiring and uplifting and educational as we can be and um, providing that access so we can all connect with each other in Vermont. And I'm Christine Golden. I'm on the leadership team of Connections along with Julie Danaher and Katie Paquette. Katie is not present today. Um, and this is Yolita Brilliant Sagmante. I thought I had it. I so thought I had that. Um, anyway, and she owns Brilliant um, Massage and Skin, which is located in downtown Burlington on King Street. And we are right now in one of the treatment rooms with this beautiful background. You can see it's a basement location. So it's, it's very quiet, very calm down here. You might hear the spa music in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's a really nice touch right now for me at least. Mm -hmm. um, she has multiple treatment rooms. She has um, six people who work here, including herself. She is the owner of the company. Seven if we count the esthetician. Too. Oh, okay. Six and massage therapists well. and one esthetician. Okay. Well, do it because I do aesthetics as well, but seven of us. Great. Yeah. So, so really strong staff. Um, I wanted to also introduce the Women Who Wow series, which is what we're doing right now. So we're interviewing really exceptional women, um, oftentimes business owners, which doesn't have to be, who um, are just thriving during this crisis and so contributing to the community and who are just, um, just powerful women that we want to highlight. Um, so I want to give you a bio. I know that there was a bio on the Eventbrite page, but I've kind of reworked it into my own words. And there are some things I really want to highlight about Yolita. So um, Yolita is the founder and owner of Brilliant Massage and Skin. And she's a certified massage therapist and licensed esthetician and a makeup artist, very talented. She's a graduate of the Body Soul Massage School. Now, can you tell me where was that school? That's in St. Albans. Oh, it's in St. Albans? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, I wasn't sure about that. And um, she opened her solo practice in 2016, which excludes the multiple modalities that her business now offers. Yolita has completed trainings, um, a lot of trainings um, in advanced deep tissue massage in Ashatsu Oriental Bar Therapy, which I definitely want to hear more about. It's, okay. <laughs> um, oncology massage, and she has over 1,000 hours of clinical massage experience, which is pretty incredible. Um, at Brilliant Massage and Skin, she offers clients the Ashiatsu Massage, clinical facials and peels, and she also does on-site makeup for weddings and special occasions, editorials, television, and other aesthetics services. Before finding her love for the spa world, she was a top performing student in Lithuania, which I'm really impressed by this, this is just incredible, um, focusing on science and music in school. She moved to the U.S for college to study music and in her early 20s was an accomplished classical pianist, songwriter, and singer. So I promise I won't make you sing today, but if you want to, we are, oh, we are all here. Maybe next time. <laughs> okay, great. Um, she also has practiced endurance running as has competed as a bodybuilder. Wow, so that's a lot of material to work with today. Yeah, lived a long life. <laughs> I feel like it's just getting sick though. True. <laughs> So where to begin? I, I think um, I'd like to focus first on your business because I want to learn more about that. Um, so you've taken quite a few different trainings. So so when did your love of the spa industry, like what, what happened? How did that happen? Um, I was always passionate about wellness. Mm. And I lived in New York City and then I just realized that doing music for a living was not kind of what I wanted to do long term. Uh, so then I enrolled into this nutrition course just to pour for fun. Then I started to do running. I joined like running group, uh, New, York, New York Road Runners and got really into that, um, did a lot of races, marathons, ultra marathons, and then I got into lifting weights. So I, um, it was like a nice, um, like 
really happy that it took a lot of time and, and then I kind of like wanted to change careers so I did personal training course but that like wasn't it mm. uh, and then I'm like well I used to play piano I played you know played piano for many years like 14 years so I'm like okay well massage is like working with your hands too you know yeah um so I thought you know uh maybe I should do that and I went to school I I really didn't think that I was gonna do it full time, to be yeah. honest, or that it was gonna become like a, a spot that I have now. Um, it just kind of organically grew. I just happened to really like it, yeah. um, and it was it's popular within uh, consumers. Everyone likes massage; it's like easy to sell. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it just kind of grew organically like yeah. that. It and seems like you have this curiosity as well. What's and that? aesthetics too. Yeah, you have this. You have this curiosity for things. Like you start down a road, and you keep growing in it. Yeah, I I get bored easily. <laughs> um, so I think that's why I tried a lot of like different things. Yeah. Um, but I think my like business running a business it's kind of not never boring because it's like always something going yeah. on yeah so it keeps my for the past five years you know kept my like attention pretty mm -hmm. well um the mm -hmm. sixth year now that you know i've been in business in this industry um and i don't know how much will i want to will be growing it i mean i don't know if we're gonna move someone you know even bigger but mm. I don't know. I probably not, but that's what I, I like. When I started, I never thought I would want to have employees, you yeah. know, or so I kind of just leave op options open. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, was it really organic growth that led you to where you are now? Or uh, well, push? well, it was so, it was really organic because, like I said, I didn't plan on expanding yeah. or having yeah. employees or anything like that. I never took any loans, nothing to fund the business. It's just all cash flow and yeah. um, hard work really. Yeah. But I just, you know, I think what made it grow is being really passionate and yeah. trying to be the best at what I did. Yeah. Uh, because I, then I had so many clients like, okay, well, where do I, I, I don't want to like decline them. So yeah. it's almost like I had to get an <laughs> yeah. employee to like, you know, because then while I'm wasting the lead, so might as well I have yeah. people that I can pass them on, you know, so it's just, I wanted to help other therapists that maybe was out of school and they didn't have a good place to work at. Sure. I wanted to have a good place for other therapists because we really treat them well here. Yeah. We pay them very well. We um, give them breaks, you know, we don't overwork them. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably pretty important. I mean, how do you prevent yourself from being overworked, being the owner of the business? It's tough. Um, I think it's easier now uh, that I do have more people, but you know, there were times where I was overworked, you yeah. know, I was, but sometimes you have to uh, just push through it, you know, yeah. and, uh, and then later you find ways how to outsource things and yeah. not do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, massage is such a, a physical thing for a yeah. whole hour. Mm -hmm. You are just like using all your muscles. To, yeah. I mean, like, that's just amazing to me. I mean, how many clients is it reasonable to take in a day when you're doing that? Uh, well, I think most therapists on average feel comfortable doing four massages a day. Okay. It depends, you know, how long they are too. Uh, but if it's like 60 or 90 minutes, like four, it's pretty reasonable. Wow. Um, I've done more than four. There were days I did six, you know. Wow. I, the max I did probably was eight in a day. That's but, insane to think about. Yeah, but I don't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, not sustainable long term, definitely. Can't yeah. do that every day. Yeah. But um, but now I would say I do three or four. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some days I do, maybe two because I have so many other tasks I had to have to do. Sure. Balancing so, it with actually running a business. Yes. Yeah. So I had yeah. to decrease my amount definitely. Yeah. 
Um, and I do facials now too, which gives a nice balance, mm, yeah. not just less always. physical. It, even though it is, yeah, it's less physical, but when you think about it, you yeah. still use like this, so you can still get tight, but it's just yeah. different, you know, different muscle groups a little sure. bit. Yeah. So I'm really curious, what advice would you give to a business owner who is a single entrepreneur right now and is looking at expanding and growing? Like, did you learn anything from that experience of bringing on more employees and growing your business and expanding your space here? Um, what advice would you give to someone thinking about doing that? Um, don't be afraid to, um, do advertising mm -hmm. it's never a waste of money like you learn things and that's how you grow you know the, the more people know about you if you do want to expand and bring in employees you have to get really good at advertising yeah. and good uh, excellent of course excellent service because reviews word of mouth mm -hmm. that's who in especially in a small community like this yeah people tell each other yeah <laughs> they do they definitely do so doing excellent work and also not being afraid to invest back into your yeah. business because it takes money to make money like yeah. i That's well like scary. first year and second year and third you know i would make money and i would invest quite a bit back yeah. into it you know especially once we took over in a bigger place and my mm -hmm. accountant's like, well, this year you made less profit than last year. <laughs> like, yes, I know, but it's because next year we'll make double, yes. you know, because you have to make sometimes some investments in order to grow. Yeah. Do you so, see your... always worked out. Oh, sorry. I was just jumping in. I do see your, your information everywhere. Uh, you know, ever since we started this Women Who Wow series and um, I was like, oh, let me make sure to go like you leave this page and like really get to know her a little bit. And now you just come up on my feed. So <laughs> um, you're definitely doing something oh, right. <laughs> you're definitely doing something right. And I like that you touch different avenues of advertising. Like I don't just Thank see you, you in one place. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, at the, well, you know, and, and the thing is once you do take on uh, employees you are responsible for their livelihood you know they pay their rent they pay buy their food uh, with you know so then it's kind of becomes your responsibility to make sure the business is doing doing well and, and people know about it and people would book with everyone um, but I enjoy that part to do to to grow it you know and do uh, that's advertising and Mm -hmm. that um, portion of it. Sounds like seeing the big picture is part of that then. Yeah, yeah, seeing a big picture and having like a long-term goal. Yeah. Like you can't just look at one month. You yeah. have to look <laughs> like five years from now, you know, yeah. like, or two years from now, like what what is the goal? Like if you wanna grow, then you have to yeah. take, you know, take some actions and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense about like, I think it's just so scary, especially now with COVID, where mm -hmm. like the bottom line is, you know, is is tough mm -hmm. um, to like be willing to take those risks and yeah. those leaps for your business. But it sounds like, in your opinion, it really pays off. To do uh, that. For me, it always pays. It's off. always paid off. Yeah, uh, I probably couldn't say for others. or for you know I, I can't don't take my advice for <laughs> granted you know yeah. savings and you know yeah until you I mean you have to see the proof of concept you know like mm -hmm. start small and then once you see okay like maybe start like invest you know 10 20 dollars a day and if it there's proof yeah. of concept that okay actually yeah like this Facebook ad does bring in yeah. people so then okay maybe I can spend fifty dollars a day and make uh 150 out of it yeah. you know it's like then also it's a lifetime of value of a customer and maybe that customer will come back and tell other people about yeah. it and mm -hmm. kind of that's how I've been growing and you know before COVID we didn't do that much paid advertising mm -hmm. but right after COVID I did more than ever before yeah because it was harder to get people to come back sure well was there an element of having to educate people that it is safe to come yeah. in here and to like, I mean, was that like a hard sell or people kind of get it? It was not a hard sell. Good. I think people need therapy more than yeah. 
ever now, you know, because they are stressed out or they feel lonely or they, feel they don't have anything else to do. They're working from home. So sure. knowing that it's safe to come here and that we are open and we always cleaned before COVID, we always get, had good sanitation, but now we're, you know, taking even more extra sure. precautions. And, but I think the brand name, what maybe helps people to trust us, you know? Yeah. Cause uh, we do have good reviews, reputation and yeah. Um, but we didn't have really, we do still have some clients that have not came back and we totally respect everyone that wants to hold off sure. as long as they want to until they're comfortable going back doing more things sure in the world um but but generally there you know i think the main issue was that people didn't know that before even open yes back up that's a know? really good point yeah for a while it was assumed everyone's just shut yes. down mm -hmm. and we were yeah. shut down for three months yeah you know so I have a question. What did you do during those three months? Were you able to work on the business or did you kind of relax or? I didn't relax much. <laughs> no. I believe that. <laughs> like I couldn't relax. I yeah. think mentally too, because yeah. it was so unknown, like what's going to happen. Um, so I, I was just working, you know, I, was, I took, uh, I took some classes. I took like, I did certification in makeup artistry. I tried to learn even more better about you know, I learned like YouTube ads, tried to learn mm -hmm. lighting, video, bought like a camera, mm -hmm. really spent time kind of working on things that could be done online. Yes. Because I couldn't do anything in person. Mm -hmm. um, and that at least I think kept me sane. Yes. <laughs> because I would have gone like a little <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of really spent time trying to learn new things. Yeah. And related to business but also i had fun doing it so sure. it was kind of like a hobby but also helpful yeah absolutely so yeah that sounds I, I love your spirit that it seems like you're always just looking for growth opportunities and to learn more and just expand like you said to be the best you can be in your business and yeah and like i think the what what's really helped me grow like i just wanted to do it like the the best the, the greatest and and just do it big you know yeah. i i i didn't want i guess once i realized you know i can help other therapists i can bring them clients i realized i don't want to do it small i actually really like working with other people it's more fun too yeah because it was getting lonely as well that's the other aspect why i like expanding and yeah. it's more fun to that. having colleagues and yeah, some, some teammates and yes. you can kind of grow together. And learn yeah, together. definitely. And they help with, we're, we're, we're a team, you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I just wrote in the chat, I guess I'll just share with you guys because I know you're, you're deep in your conversation, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Um, yeah, and I think that's amazing, Alita, because great leaders create opportunities for others' growth. And that's exactly what you've done, mm -hmm. which is really one of the most impressive things about about your journey Thank and you. yeah yeah I think that's my passion to help others and I realized you know well I can I can't help I can't do massage on everyone like I only have so <laughs> many hours a day you know like I so then over the I can help other therapists by providing them a uh, good place to grow as a professional and work in a nice team yeah. and make a living doing it um so that's what i really enjoy i enjoy working with people yeah and helping them that's so wonderful i, I bet they appreciate that it seems like you really invest in your employees and support them and mm -hmm. just the fact that you appreciate that you are their income you are their mm -hmm. income source yeah you have respect for that i treat them like they are the clients of this business because mm -hmm. they are you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um we treat equally clients and employees in equal respect like employees are because they can go work anywhere they want you know yeah so we appreciate all employees. I think that's just wonderful. Yeah. So I want to talk more about the services that you offer. Mm -hmm. 
And I also, like, which is your favorite massage? Do you have a favorite that you offer? Yeah, so uh, I think like my specialty really yeah. became a couple years ago, Ashiatsu massage. Yeah. And it's a Japanese style and it's called uh, two words from Japanese, so Ashi and foot. So it's like foot pressure. So that means I incorporate as well my full body, including feet, so that people who likes maybe firmer pressure or they just like this very relaxing, long strokes, deep relaxation, um, really appreciate that style. And I, I kind of really like that. It's because I was a runner and, and, and I was into sports. I appreciate that I can move a lot mm. doing it because it has bars, so, you know, on the ceiling where we have two rooms that have bars on top of yep. the ceiling. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like yoga, kind of like workout for me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like very nice to do uh, deep pressure for people like, you know, deeper pressure. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be deep. It's not painful. You know, mm -hmm. you can be done soft as well. But pretty much you use your feet to massage someone. So do you have to be pretty dexterous in your feet then to do that? It took me about like six months to get like comfortable with it and and now I feel like it's like a second nature huh. honestly so it's like my second hands now wow that's yeah pretty, that's pretty yeah cool. I feel like a monkey sometimes <laughs> like, you know, the next thing I'll start brushing teeth with my feet <laughs> hopefully not patients or clients teeth no yeah. my own <laughs> But it, yeah, I think that's, you know, and you see people who lose their hands, they mm -hmm. learn to do things with your feet. And it's amazing, yeah. like, and all the dancers, look how, you true. know, how Very amazing true. things they do with their feet. And oh, yeah. It, we, yeah, we're amazing as humans in general, like, yeah. where we can learn, but it's fun to do. That's, that's pretty interesting. So is that typically like a 60 minute massage as well? Okay. Yeah, it can be any, any, any length. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We do anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours massages. Wow. Wow. So, but most popular is 60 and 90. Gotcha. That's so interesting. So how did you learn that, that art? Do you, like, do you do like a I passionate wish, or? I wish I could say I went to Japan. And started, <laughs> that would be a good story. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I went to Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Clinton, Connecticut, there is a. A program that teaches the style. Yeah. There is all over US they have these courses, but the closest one was here. And I went there two times. First time I went to do the basic training, then I went to do the advanced training because I really liked it. And I have to say, like, I don't have any, you know, like that helps to not overwork like hands yes. as well because you get like a break. And I don't have like back issues. I mean, yes, I get tight, but I get regular massages myself. Okay. So I don't have any like injuries or issues, which sometimes it's massage therapists can be prone to get repetitive strain injuries. Um, and, sure. and I've been lucky not to not to get that because of yeah. body mechanics and using different styles, something like Ashiatsu is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, great. And so, but you also, so you also are trained in advanced deep tissue massage. Mm -hmm. That's done with your hands, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is, uh, which is very similar, you, you know, um, it, you can do deep massage with hands or you mm -hmm. can do it with feet, but I can okay. do both. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And most therapists can, you know, that work here, they have advanced deep tissue. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And so, some of them are lighter. Some of them are, you know, it's also like everyone is so unique. Yeah. So even you might be, be trained in the same modality, yeah. but your touch is different. Sure. That makes so, sense. but, but yes, you know, I can do that with mm. hands as well. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what is oncology massage? I think I should know what that um, is. So it is for clients who had cancer before, oh, okay. or they might be going through chemotherapy, and it's a very light, gentle massage okay. with certain precautions that have to be taken for cancer patients to receive it safely. Because mm -hmm. they might be you know, going through chemo, they might have radiation, they have inserts they might have different wounds or different things like that so my mom actually passed away from cancer and that's why i was yeah. interested to learn that modality as well oh, i'm really really sorry yeah it's it's been a while now yeah. but thank you yeah yeah i mean that's that's so interesting so if you're doing so 
So is that something that's usually prescribed by doctors as part of a cancer treatment massage? It can be. It okay. can be. Or it could be like once they're done with their treatment, it could be like a recovery okay. uh, additional alternative, mm -hmm. you know, treatments. Mm -hmm. It's 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 physical, but it's also mental for sure. them too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like being taken care of yeah. and taking care of their bodies again. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it's good to have training in that because, you know, if someone had like the lymph nodes removed or they have lymphedema or they have certain th medications that they're taking. So we have to keep in mind that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I didn't realize that was its own type of massage, but now that you're saying it, it makes so much sense. Yeah. That there's so many things to be sensitive to. It's, it's not so much that it's a very different techniques in okay. itself. It's yeah. about knowing which techniques are okay to use okay. and what pressure is okay. Sure. With certain, with certain people with certain medications, even just let's say like not leaving alone oncology, like heart condition or if they're taking blood thinners, you know, we can do certain like deep oh, tissue and okay. things like that. So would you say that that's a good client for you? Is someone who is having health issues that might need some sensitivity to yeah. that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause sometimes like people, they might not think that they can go get a massage sure. when they having, when they are having these issues, but they yeah. can. It's just that we might need to make some adjustments to it. Sure. Yeah, that's that's really good to know because I imagine there's a lot of masseuse is it masseuses or uh, masseuse? massage therapists massage, massage, massage yeah. therapists out there who um, maybe can't be as sensitive. So it's really nice to know that yeah. there's someone that yeah, we yeah. definitely don't do like cookie cutter approach, yeah. and that's kind of what I started when I first started. That was my motto, like yeah. doing custom massage, and we don't really even like to call it like deep tissue Swedish or mm -hmm. sports like because sometimes yeah. you need to mix and blend sure. different techniques in the same treatment yeah. so we don't even have different price points for deep tissue mm -hmm. or Swedish because a lot of times clients don't know what style they need sure and the therapist you know they can make the assessment and decide we just have like add-ons that if they want to add like hot stone cupping, aromatherapy, CBD, foot scrub, or things that uh, add-ons. But in general, like you want to massage, we usually just book custom massage and then we kind of talk to the client what their goals are and mm -hmm. what their medical history and then we oh, that's great. choose the best treatment. Wow, that's, that's really next level treatment there. You're asking what the medical history is and like mm -hmm. what, what their uh, desired outcome is yeah oftentimes like i've been to spas where you're just like you're just like signed up and you just mm -hmm. go in the room and you leave and that's that's that <laughs> yeah well no like we we never that's the thing like we never want to do like cookie approach yeah. like that because you know we always talk like is this are you work like what's your ergonomics at work like you sit a lot or do mm -hmm. you uh have shoulder pain what sports you're doing you know were you cycling a lot or mm -hmm. tennis or so then we take into consideration the duration that and will work you know specific areas that might need more attention yeah that makes a lot of sense now that you say it <laughs> yeah but i feel like it isn't always a scene yeah and I, I think that's what different you know we're not we, we we're not maybe like your regular spa mm -hmm. we're more like a clinical massage mm -hmm. you know or yes. facials we do peels and advanced like skincare we do lampro we remove like skin tags and keratoses oh. different so i think i always wanted to be a little above just like the general yeah. spa yeah a little more like on the medical side but not to say that we don't do just a simple relaxing massage we sure. can do that too when a person says you know i have no issues nothing i just want to come and get away for yeah. you know 19 minutes or an yeah. hour and yes we will <laughs> That's fine do too. that but, <laughs> but we still ask though like sure. you still ask you know your medical history and where what's your work like because then yeah. be relaxing but we might still you know work a little more on the certain areas yeah that makes a lot of sense so so the um esthetician services is something you brought in after mm -hmm. the yes only that was before COVID actually in the, well, I got my own personal license in October. Okay. Yeah. In 2019. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then we brought in PCA skincare products and 
we stay max um, and we started and did the lamp probe training me and Gina. She, she's the other esthetician that works here with me. Um, and uh, yeah, we do peels. Winter now is a great time to do peels to mm. regenerate the skin for like sun damage in the summer. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm really passionate about aesthetics and beauty and yeah. that stuff too and makeup. And I want to acknowledge that um, you have the most amazing pictures. I only see Facebook. I don't, I don't really look at Instagram. I'm sure you're on Instagram too, where um, you model essentially for these pictures. I think that's like Instagram influence. You know? <laughs> like they just have like such a high standard. So yes. I try to like make these pictures as good as possible. Yeah. yeah. Is that for fun or is that like a career move? Or I think is... it's, it's, it's like my time. It's relaxing for yeah. me. It's like fun, but also, I don't know, maybe it's related a little bit to career too, mm -hmm. but I enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is fun to get dressed up yeah. and fancy and... And, you know, during the COVID, that's what I did. <laughs> I would dress up with makeup on like I was pretending to go... But all I do is just take a picture and <laughs> post it on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, look at my makeup today, you know. <laughs> but that kept me, like, positive. Yeah. You know, because, like, if I didn't continue, like, doing that, not dressing up, I think I would have gotten, like, depressed or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was really hard not being able to come to work and, like, not work and not see people, not... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so weird. Yeah, we always need to kind of keep us going during those times. Yeah, I can see it being a hobby, but I mean, as you know, being an influencer yeah. is a real it's a career job. now. It can be, yeah. If that's what you're going for. So. I mean, if it goes somewhere there, I mean, I haven't yeah. had any big deals. If yeah. someone wants me to give me a deal, sure. <laughs> but, you know, there and there, they'll send me like a product to oh, try. They do? Yeah, like I'll oh. try some skincare products. So that's maybe it'll cool. grow. I don't know. And you review the product on your Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Or I'll like post a picture of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but I haven't got there. paid for it, only some like free stuff. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe they will say, hey, do you want to model with this? I mean, that's the next step, you know? Yeah. It could definitely happen. I mean, I'm, I'm much more busier now, too. Yeah. So I don't know like how much yeah. actual time I would have for that. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, it's, it's like a hobby, too, sure. which I enjoy. So I would do it probably if someone, you know, offered yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's really creative and fun. I, I also see like, sometimes you're putting like a face mask on yourself yeah. and it's like, oh, that's really weird looking. That's cool. But, um, <laughs> I, well that we actually sell face yeah. masks. So that is related to work, you know, yeah. like PCA masks or SA masks. And I like you fun, weird stuff like that. <laughs> like we have, you know, green tea masks, we have CBD masks, we mm -hmm. have like gold masks, we have hydro jelly ones that like peel off. They're mm -hmm. just like K-beauty from Korea. Okay. So I like those. Um, so I, I, I enjoy them doing it myself, but then I want to maybe influence others to try it and take care of their skin. I try to give some tips, you yeah. know. Absolutely. Um, it's fun. Awesome. I'll have to follow you on Instagram. I, I'm on it so rarely. I'm so behind the times, but. Well, I mean, I guess they say like, I mean, Instagram has grown so much now, but yeah, now it's like even now, like young people go on TikTok. They don't even go on Instagram anymore, but I'm know. not that level. I don't know if I'm ready for TikTok. TikTok. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Um, so I definitely want to talk about more about your personal background. And one thing I want to make sure that we talk about because it's so exciting is that you just passed your citizenship, citizenship yeah. test. Yeah. So what, so what was that like preparing for that test? Um, I just listened to a lot of YouTube videos about like quizzes and things yeah. like that, learning civics and U.S. history. Mm -hmm. uh, and this morning I actually did the oath, so yeah. I officially got my... Yeah. passport application congratulations yeah, thank you so exciting it's a ceremony yeah it was yeah. like outside five <laughs> minutes yeah. did the oath, serve united states yeah that little flag actually put it down there but yeah oh, nice yeah. <laughs> yeah it was super nice yeah but it yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've been in U.S. now for 13 mm. years. Mm. I came in 2007. 
Uh, it's been a long time coming, you know, yeah. I kind of hesitated, obviously, you know, like cha changing your citizenship because I don't yeah. think my country, Lithuania, will want me to keep because I'm not yeah. there much. I don't have property or much things down there. They're probably not let me keep that passport anymore. Um, but, you know, I plan to retire here. I have mm -hmm. husband now here and um, I don't see me going back there so it just makes sense and now i can vote too so. yeah that's true that's yeah true. that's the only right for us citizens so mm -hmm. so so the motivation behind it was like you you really have set down roots here and so you like i feel like i already am a citizen here i want to i think way. so yeah, yeah. I, now i feel like more like a part of everyone yeah you know i mean i was you know i had green card but then you're still can vote I mean, now I would have to do like the jury duty too, which hopefully I don't oh, have to do. But. I haven't ever had to do jury duty, so there's a small chance of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it if I have to. But, yeah. <laughs> I guess we have to, right? There's yeah. No oh, Katie Pocket says she did jury duty. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I did. It was well, like three days long. <laughs> Over wood smoke. It was yeah. really boring. Really? It wasn't fun at all? It wasn't like Law and Order or anything? Because our topic <laughs> was really boring. It was arguing over the smell of wood smoke. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Three days like, of that. Like plain, bland People are complaining it was that going into their... No yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it so was crazy. crimes. <laughs> All right, you, you get it. You know, you'll get an exciting one. We'll see. <laughs> it is a weird um, so process really, to go through. Is it? Uh, yeah, they you ask you. To, um, well, the lawyers okay. can like ask you questions, and then they, you know, they decide who they're gonna, you know, select for jury. And like mm -hmm. people just flat out try to get out of it, like right in front of them. You know, <laughs> like oh well, you know, I just can't. And then sometimes they still get picked anyway. It was just, uh, <laughs> it's really, yeah. it's kind of funny. Um, I was kind of excited to get picked until I found out like what the case was. And I'm like, oh, this is really kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, not that I wanted anything horrible, but I mean, wood smoke, really? Well, maybe <laughs> you'll get one more that's more exciting. <laughs> 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 I don't really want a murder case or something. No, you know, that's, no. I don't think I'd want that. It uh, was, it was an experience. So. <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness. Um, so you mentioned, I mentioned earlier that you um, are a pianist and a songwriter. And uh, was it classical was. in nature? Or? Yeah. Well, I uh, studied classical piano for ten years okay. and singing, uh, and that's how I came to U.S. Really, the only reason why I did come here because well my mom's dream was for me to be a professional musician mm. so i kind of followed that dream and then yeah. she wanted me to come to study to us um and i enrolled into college and that's how i end ended up here mm. um, and And, you know, I tried to pursue it and I realized, you know, it's in 2007. So, um, but I tried, you know, I yeah. tried and, you know, it brought me here uh, and I stayed because I kind of didn't feel like I wanted to go back because I did not have my parents anymore. Sure. Um, and I wanted, I wanted to come to be in the U.S. because it's um, capitalism, it's a land of opportunity, you yeah. know. Um, and I like Americans, I like their um, spirit, and and I am now one of them, I guess I yes, should say. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> I should stop saying, you know, like <laughs> them, uh, but I always admired, you know, movies like watching growing up, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you hear, and then like, oh, wow, yeah. And you were in New York City, right? When you yeah. First, mm -hmm. So what college did you go to? Well, I got accepted to Hobart and William Smith College, which is upstate. Yeah. Um, but uh, then I ended up um, quitting after some time, and then I moved to actual New York City gotcha. Gotcha. and uh, tried to like play in bands and try to pursue it that way. Um, mm -hmm. 
moved a little bit to Nashville too as oh. well in Chicago. I mean, I traveled a little bit. Wow. Um, and so I got to see US, you know, not just New York City, but yeah, it was exciting to be in New York City because yeah. that's where I thought I needed to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. To pursue that career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So do you ever play piano now? Do you practice stuff? I have it, you know, I have the piano. Mm -hmm. I just don't have much time to do sure. it. Sure. But maybe someday when I retire, I will join a band again. And yes. I'll start playing. There you go. Well, more time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. It's pretty consumed right now. But, you know, music may have been a big influence in my life and made a lot of like, made me, I think, a stronger person and just creative yeah. and I kind of think I use that creativity in business because mm -hmm. you have to be creative mm -hmm. I think you do you really do to be an entrepreneur and doing things differently yeah and you have not to be afraid to stand out from everyone mm. you because you have to kind of go against a little bit the society mm -hmm. like nine to five you know it's a different path it's yes. not a secure path like so you have to take risks and that's what what you do in music too I'm not much a musician, so I'm gonna take your word for that. <laughs> yeah, well, like, or any artist, yeah. I would say, you know, it's it's a risky career. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But it's so nice to have that skill that you can always, have, as, even if it's just a hobby, that's just oh, an amazing yeah. talent it's to have. Nice. It's nice to be able to read music yeah. and pick it up, and I'm sure I hopefully can do it sometime again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you have you have like a, a full piano at home? I have an electronic one. Oh, now. nice! Yeah, yeah. Nice, but nice. maybe I'll get a real one again. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, um, I know we're getting up to the point where we want to open up to Q and A. Yeah. But is there anything else you want us to know about you that we didn't talk about? Well, I work a lot, you know, <laughs> but I enjoy what I do. Um, really, really enjoy what I do. Yeah. So it's all worth it. And yeah, I don't know, but what is gonna happen in the future, but things are going well now. So yeah. all grateful for that. So you're yeah. so so for the foreseeable future you're thinking about staying in massage and in this business. I think and, so. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And I'm passionate about real estate too. Oh really? Yeah. So maybe we'll we have one investment property now with my husband, but I would like to do more and yeah. invest money that way too. That's great. My dad actually worked in real estate, so I have mm -hmm. that connection. Like, I always mm -hmm. kind of do things kind of what connects to my parents. I don't know why. But, that makes sense. But, yeah, so yeah, that's my other thing. But other than that, I don't know if there's anything else. I, I think that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're doing wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions they want to ask Yolita? Or just hate how awesome she is. That's a good thing to do. Well, I feel like it's too much praise. This, this was great and Christine you're you're doing an amazing job of being the interviewer <laughs> um who does uh I'm curious who if you are the one who does or if you hire somebody to do your marketing um so I've always done it myself uh, from day one, but I had consultants that cons I consulted with on what to do. Um, and I found that very helpful. Uh, the first year, which when I started 2015, um, is I hired like SEO consultant, how to like rank on search. And he gave me some great tips and I followed that for a couple of years to organically build business because I didn't have much money to do paid advertising. Um, I never paid anyone to do my Google or Facebook ads or YouTube ads. Um, I did hire consultants. Like I, I hired someone from Fiverr to help me figure out like Facebook ads. Fiverr is a great place to hire people yeah. for a good price. Yeah. Um, now I do, I just recently for the first time hired someone that helps me, helps us to write blog posts. Mm -hmm. But before then I used to do that myself as well. Uh, but now it saves me quite a bit of time of having her to do it. She's actually in Philippines, so she's like a virtual assistant. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so she helps with that and she does some Instagram engagement and things like that. But I, you know, I'm the one who has to post the picture or whatever, or, and I give her, um, we have like a, 
you know, what blog posts, I give her what list of what blog posts she needs to like put on and things yeah. like that. But, um, but yeah, we fi finally outsourced that. Um, and, um, but other than that, you know, I feel like if you want to keep your like authenticity and style, it's probably the best to do your Facebook ads yourself. Mm. I mean, Google search ads, you can definitely hire someone it's because it's not as personal but like having pictures that are of your business that shows personality is important mm -hmm. i think yeah. um but really yeah like I, I i at least i oversee everything you know even maybe i don't do everything myself anymore but so keeping that personal, that, that touch on it, not just giving yeah. it 100% to someone well, else. Well, and you know, I do my own ads because that was the main question, right? Yeah. Julie? Yeah. And I think you, um, I think it was good what, or it was insightful to hear what you shared. And I think, you know, sometimes that's where I'm like, well, I feel like hiring somebody could, could lose a good amount of the authenticity behind it. And especially when they don't quite know yeah. your field how do they tell your brand story yeah when they're not in the day of the life of uh, and and feeling it each day emotionally yeah. well it's important to i mean they could give you the bare bones they can help you maybe to figure out the technology behind it but maybe you want to like really point them down to the copyright itself and what you want your message to be um because yeah that's going to be the most important for you to convey like what your services really are and you're professional in that field but like the technology behind it you can you know hire someone to show you and teach you or do it for you mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. that willingness to learn is very entrepreneurial too yeah. yeah, but also like I like to be in control of them because sometimes yeah. like we I know when we need more ads I know mm -hmm. when we need less if we're busy, maybe mm -hmm. I shut down the ads because you know, we can't take mm -hmm. so why would I be spending yeah. revenue money on you know on the ads yeah. when we don't need them. Yeah. Um, or when we hire someone new, then I'll ha need some ads because I need them to, you know, build up faster. Sure. The, whatever um give a little boost and after covid like i mentioned that's what i did more to at least like even just to let people know we're open you know because mm -hmm. they might not know yeah and not you know book because of that reason yeah. so um yeah mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah because you know your business best and what it needs in, right from week to week but uh, not to say that you know Know, if you f find the right fit who can do it for you and they're really good at communicating and telling me you know well i need this at this date because like we're slow at, slower at that time then they will work with you and of course it depends also like you probably will spend a little more money you know but mm -hmm. i i would i don't know i just i never done it where you know there are people who are like well just pay them like a flat fee and that will do everything for you. I, I have not done that before. Mm -hmm. So, but I personally, I don't know. I just don't feel like that would be the right fit for, for, for me. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Are there any other questions or comments? Yeah. Chris Beth. Um, so many of us go into business because we're passionate about, um, you know, a particular field, but then when, you know, when the business gets going, we find that we're um, kind of overwhelmed with like the administration and, and things like that. And then, um, you know, I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about how you stay connected to that passion and, you know, excited about your work. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely uh, uh, an issue. Because, um, I mean, doing your profession is one thing and then running a business is another thing. Um, and that's where maybe outsourcing helps if you don't want to like, cause I don't, I, there's no way I want to do my own tax. Like I never did my own tax, <laughs> you know? Uh, but so yeah, cause it's just, so trying maybe the tasks that overwhelm you, maybe try to outsource those tasks so you could stay connected more closer to doing what is really your passion or yeah hiring people to 
take things off your hands, you know, but you know, it's no matter like how much you hire, I mean, you still have to spend at least some time to doing that back end work for the business and advertising, but maybe just carving out specific times, you know, so it doesn't overlap too much with taking away. I don't know what you do specifically. Um, you know, what, what is your niche? But I know for me, you know, there were times where I was, um, I was getting a little bit disconnected, but at the same time, then it kind of connects you back too, because you, um, for me, I like doing different things. So if I feel like if I only did massage and didn't have to do anything else, I would get probably a little bored or burned out, burned out. Like mm -hmm. I, I like the variety and then doing something for a little bit and coming back, mm -hmm. you know, doing them working again more with clients and or whatnot. Like, so yeah. maybe it depends on personality too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a really good question. Cause I think even when you're doing your own business, minus the operations stuff for a long time, you can become less passionate just cause you're doing the same thing mm -hmm. repetitively. Mm -hmm. So like connecting back to it, it seems like the way you do that is you, you keep changing it up. Mm -hmm. Like you add on other services and you like, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, learn new skills and add to your skill set. So probably I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Not getting in the rut, maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. keeping it fresh, you know, try to keep yeah. it fresh all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not keep it too boring. Mm -hmm. I think that question you asked, Christabeth, is just such a, wonderful one that I, I'm going to add to like our feed after and you know how yes. when your passion grows your business to the point where you maybe start feeling like you're not able to do both or that how do you still stay connected and what tools and resources do you use to help you manage that so or you maybe find that you have a new passion you know maybe you're even more passionate about the business parts than you were about the whatever that you began with to begin with, or mm -hmm. maybe you are not, then maybe you need to scale back and just uh, do that specific, you know, thing that you were doing. But I mean, need to make a decision maybe to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, change, you. change is inevitable. And I think yeah. that people get in, into trouble as business owners when they, just get say nope this is this is where i'm at this is how it's always going mm -hmm. to be and don't change and adapt mm -hmm. and covid was definitely teaching us a lot about that yeah yeah it definitely covid shifted a lot of things and yeah. made us to be more creative and work harder like i never worked as hard yeah as after covid you yeah. know just with all the learning even more about like how to get the word out there and mm -hmm. utilize all the online stuff yeah absolutely absolutely it's not business as usual that's what they keep saying but you know we've been doing really well yeah considering you know it's post covid <clears throat> we we had we made really good good um uh, numbers like mm -hmm. we have good good amount of people that come in that's fantastic yeah that's yeah so we're really blessed did you have to lay anyone off Perfect. No, no, wow. like we, I didn't fire anyone and wow. we, uh, we had PPP, uh, we had, you know, they got unemployment, then we got PPP, we kept all mm -hmm. employees, um, nice. one person moved away uh, in, um, in, the, in, in beginning of September, I hired another person to replace them and even hired one more person for part-time right now, so. Gotcha. That's great. Yeah. So we, we are, we have not lost anyone, thankfully. That's so wonderful to hear. Really good news. We have time for one more question. If someone has a question or comment they want to add. All right. No worries. Well, um, thank you so much. Thank you. you. Yeah. For taking the time. Fun. You're so busy and I really appreciate you like inviting me into your space. And, you know, I got to tour and, Gosh, the space is just beautiful. It's like, every room is just so relaxing and has these elements of relaxation. Two of them have like fireplace elements. Like it's, it's just amazing. So I definitely recommend checking them out um, right here on King Street in Burlington. Um, 
So you need to brilliant. Yeah, well, thank you guys. Yes. And if you come over, we'll add you some free add-ons. Just uh -oh. mention this uh, webinar. Uh-oh, I love that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Have a really Thank good you day. so much. All right. Hopefully see you all soon. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a brilliant day. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> all right. Recording.